Hey everybody, John Millen here with uh, Millen Group. Hey, I wanna talk about artificial intelligence. There's a lot on the news right now about um, Chat GPT, which is a new artificial intelligence program. I don't know if you've seen about it. If not, you're gonna hear about it soon. So you may wanna look it up. It's called Chat GPT as one thing. Um, but the artificial intelligence is, is basically using machine learning where it interprets certain things and gra grabs, grabs data and then it allows to output certain things in the case of chat gpt it'll write an essay for you for instance it does all kinds of crazy things it's a, it's mind-boggling but what does that have to do with um with your employees uh, there are technologies that we have been using that have been around for three to five years when it comes to artificial intelligence for what's called underwriting and underwriting is a very just a fancy word in insurance that is looking at the risk like how much are people gonna use the benefits that you're offering? And so that's called the underwriting process. And so um, there's, there's some very interesting things happening with artificial intelligence. There's companies that can take a look at a demographic census. So basically you give them an Excel sheet with uh, the person's name, their home zip code, home address, full home address, um, their gender, their date of birth, and maybe like a phone number, email, that although phone number and email is not really necessary. So it's just basic demographic information to people. And what it does is it runs through like 5 billion data points. It looks at pharmacy data, it looks at um, medical data, it looks at a lot of different types of data and assigns a risk score to the, to the group. So why is this important? I know it's a little weird and freaky and some people get uptight when they hear this, but if you step back and understand that everything you're doing now and for a long time has been monitored, like if that's news to you, this may be the first time you've heard that, but you can do your own research on this, that our mobile phones and devices, all the apps, all the websites, all that stuff we go to, and we sign up for free apps like Facebook, Instagram, when you go to Google on your phone and you search stuff, you're basically, because those platforms are free, you're signing away the ability for them to capture data. And what happens is that data is then repackaged and sold to data mining companies that have access to billions of data points, like lots of stuff on you. Um, and so what happens is when we, when we look at a company, and let's say you have a company that has 85 people on healthcare, traditionally that's not a credible group because you don't have enough people to, to, to withstand 10 people on a high cost prescription or five open heart surgeries when it comes to the amount of money you pay for insurance. Uh, but what this technology does is it allows it, it goes out in, in, in a de-identified way, takes a look at the group and comes back with a score and many different factors, like it's uh, different categories. It's really fascinating. I've been able to see kind of behind the scenes and what's, what's cool is it's not by person. Like it doesn't say, oh, John has this. It's completely de-identified, but when you take the entire group in total, including children and spouses on the plan like whoever's going to be on the medical plan it looks at all those including if you have someone that has six kids or you have some people that are 70 years old in your plan and it gives you a score and that information that scoring method is used by insurance companies to provide a rate so this is really good news because if you're very healthy if you're a very healthy group you might end up you might have been paying over overpaying for quite a bit and so this data allows the insurance company, which is accounting for the large claims. It's not the routine stuff that, that we worry about, not the doctor visits and specialist visits and minor blood work. It's, it's the high cost prescription drugs right now. And that stuff is captured. Like we know, this system knows you've got three people on Crohn's disease. And a typical Crohn's medication, the retail price is about $120,000 a year. And with some discounting, you can actually get that down to about $80,000 a year, but that's a big hit on a medical plan, right? You get have one child of a new hire hit your plan, and that's a big hit. So this system will capture that. Again, not tell you who it is. So you get the scoring back, and then the underwriters from the insurance company tell us that, and then, we're, then we use tools on our end as advisors and strategists to deal with the risk. And so it's really fascinating. If you'd like to learn more about it, I can send you some information. Um, you can go to our website, millingroup.com, or you can connect with me there or through, uh, through YouTube or LinkedIn, wherever you're seeing this. Um, so I'm not gonna get too deep into it now, but at first I was like, this is BS, I don't like this at all. No, 
And then I realized, wait a minute, all of our data is being sold and purchased anyways. So, okay, let me see what it looks like. And I ran it through and it's fascinating because it gives visibility to companies that have none. So if you have between, let's say 50 employees on your medical plan and 500 or even more than 500, right? 50 or above, it's, it's really helpful. The other thing it does is it tells you if it's a bad, like if it's a bad fit for maybe some alternate funding strategy. So what I have talked about before on my website and also on YouTube is there's five types of financing healthcare. How do you manage that risk? There's five ways, fully insured, level funded, full self-funding, partial self-funding, and cost plus, also called reference-based pricing. Um, there's actually a sixth one that's not really funding per se, but it's a sixth strategy called an ICRA, uh, which is which. first I was poo-pooing it a few years ago, and now it's gaining a little bit of traction depending on the, the demographic. So what this data allows you to do is look at all six, and some of them you can rule out real quick, like, okay, that's not a good idea, that's not a good idea. Ooh, these have some merit. And so what I am talking to, to a lot of CEOs and CFOs and HR managers now is have you considered have you looked at all six funding types or strategies and most people don't even know what they are so we start with the basics of these are the six it's fully insured which a lot of companies are which may be the riskiest i know it's counterintuitive people are like oh that's the safest it may be the riskiest it may be the right fit then you go all the other way which is full self-funding which are like really big companies where there's no insurance so it's pure claims funding like Walmart, Burger King, big companies do that. Maybe ones with several thousands of employees. Then there's um, partial self-funding, which is more popular. This is where you're using some reinsurance to, to catch big claims that come in, which is really a very smart strategy. Then you have level funding, which is a baby step. So I was on a call yesterday and they're like, what is level funding? So it's a retail plan from the retail carriers, the big five companies, and it's levelized premiums, it's level rates, it's risked based on the health of the group, which is, could be good or bad. And it allows you to get some claims visibility. You can't really break the pieces apart. So it's not a wholesale plan, but it's a baby step sometimes to a more of a custom wholesale plan. And then you have cost plus, which is also called reference-based pricing, which in some areas of the country is a great fit. Some areas, not so much yet, but again, things are changing so fast. And then the six is ICRA, which is an individual consumer health reimbursement arrangement. Um, and this is really fascinating for some companies. It's gonna be a great fit. So what, why do I talk about this? Artificial intelligence is not just stuff you're seeing now, which is kind of cool, like, oh, it'll write a term paper about, about World War II in the tone of Donald Trump. Like, that's what they're coming out with. That is kind of cool. But it's now artificial intelligence. The tools we use and have been using is really, really, really neat. So if you wanna explore that, what's really fascinating when I talk to companies is like, I can probably tell you your risk of your group without ever going to the carrier. Like, how's that possible? You can't, you don't go to Highmark, you don't go to Blue Cross, United Healthcare, or Cigna, like, huh? they're not, and I said, no, I'm not the broker and they're not gonna give it to me anyways. They don't give it anyways, right? They're not giving data, they don't want to. Um, so I'm like, yeah, send me the census and you know, we'll just send it in and, and risk, it's like getting a risk analysis. It doesn't cost any money, it's fast. It's fairly accurate, like it's not perfect, but it's really accurate, like, whoa, we've got four people on high cost prescriptions. It's like, okay, that could be, and, and roughly this is how much it's gonna cost to manage that. And like, whoa, it's 300 grand for claims just for those four people. And there's only 50 people on the plan, so maybe that's, that's not good. Or we have strategies to evacuate those four people. Or even better, I had a nonprofit that the score came back the best they've ever seen, really low. They're like, we are jumping on a full custom wholesale plan because the risk going showed, wow, this is perfect. The time you wanna move into alternate strategy is not when you're blowing through your claims and you're having horrible years, although that can help. If you get those pockets where, hey, we got a pretty healthy population, you jump in it and then it's running whenever you get the big stuff hitting. So uh, let us know if we can help. Quick conversation, no obligation, um, you know, pretty casual 15, 20 minute phone call. I tell people, look, the purpose of our first call is really simple. It's to determine if we need to have a second one. And so check us out at millingroup.com.